Sustainable Apparel Coalition to adopt more environmentally friendly practices. These competitors came together, they decided that there was a bigger purpose they wanted to work towards, and it really worked. Um, so working within our organizations is great and it's important, but it's not a, a substitute for the collective impact if you really want to make change in, uh, in a complex system. And in the same vein, I think we have to reframe our attitudes towards transparency in order to help advance learning and best practices for all. Signing on to an industry-wide effort or pledge might feel really uncomfortable at first, but we believe it's a shared commitment to sharing knowledge that's gonna yield real results across the field. Of course, it's high time to reframe, as I think a lot of people have said today, the idea that audiences only want to see a certain kind of story um, and to break the orthodoxies around the business that hold us back. We need to stop arguing about whether diversity sells. And maybe we're finally done with that after Black Panther. But then I see the news about another white man, um, no matter how talented, John Favreau, getting the next big Star Wars assignment this morning, still with, um, with no woman or people of color hired for that franchise, despite a talented woman at the head of Lucasfilm there. Um, and, and the same talented woman who's the head of the commission working on these very same issues. And I wonder what's going on. Um, and she's, you know, Lucasfilm is not alone. Earlier this week, The Wrap um, published a studio report card looking ahead um, at the slates, the upcoming studio slates. And, you know, Stacy hasn't done her 2017 statistics, but this is 2018, 3.5% women directors looking forward. So it didn't look too promising. So for me, I think I'm more committed to, than ever to these tangible tactics that we need to adopt. Um, and finally, I think we have to reframe the idea that's so prevalent in our business lives um, that there's a clear and direct path to success. I know that sounds depressing, but I think it's gonna be really hard. Um, I think there's gonna be learning and iterations and mistakes. Um, and even as it applies to the programs, the reframe programs that you've heard about, um, we expect they're gonna adapt and change over time and that we wanna work with all of our partners, with all of you, with everyone we're sharing these ideas with um, to learn from you and from one another. Um, so as a co-founder of Reframe, I'm proud to work with, um, with Kathy, with all of our partners, with all of our ambassadors, um, because we do believe that this work is important. Um, we recognize that the images and the stories that we create help us make sense of the world and help us understand one another um, and our experiences and help us imagine possibilities. One of my favorite authors, Rebecca Solnit, wrote, a valued person lives in a society in which her story has a place. I think that's what we're all after um, for audiences everywhere. This is the change we want to see and the change that's possible when we diversify the storytellers, as Stacy again said, to ensure they have the systems and advocates in place to amplify their voices. So I now want to turn a little bit to Sundance. Um, I've had the pleasure of working at Sundance for eight years now, um, and we've seen incredible examples of the way storytellers can change um, over our 40 years history, the way they can make change. And sometimes this change is immediate and tangible in the way that you're gonna hear about from Amy Ziering in just a few short minutes. Um, but perhaps more often, the impact comes in more abstract forms. From storytelling um, when, that comes when the perspective of the storyteller allows us to empathize with a character or a, a, a story or a place or an experience that we might otherwise fail to see or to know. And at Sundance, we have a pretty good track record of supporting st uh, storytellers who are women and people of color, certainly in comparison to the mainstream Hollywood. Um, and this is because a lot of the barriers that have been mentioned don't, don't apply as much in the independent world. There are fewer gatekeepers, there's less money involved, um, fewer people to say no. Um, but a lot of the same trends that have been experienced in the mainstream are true in the independent world. And because we did that research many years ago, um, we've had a chance to be working with our own um, research and our own data set over the past five years in our own version of the toolkit. And I wanna share with you a few of the learnings that we've adopted and how they've worked because, I just gotta get some water, because um, I think they are useful as they might apply to you in your businesses. And, um, and it's, it's learning that um, we haven't had a chance to share very much. So I'm just gonna talk about a few of our intervention points. Excuse me, thank you. 
So first of all, um, submissions. So we have open submissions at Sundance. I know somebody was asking about open submissions. We do have open submissions at Sundance in all of our programs. Um, and we do have diverse screeners who helm the selection process. But when we looked at our application demographics, we realized that our pool of candidates didn't reflect the population at large. Um, we said we were open, we publicized that, but saying it wasn't enough. We had to invite people in. So what we did is we created new programs to reach into communities of color more intentionally uh, with workshops and alumni artist involvement um, we, we, to send the message that Sundance is for everyone. These efforts started in Native American communities where we saw submissions increase over 400% in just a couple of years. And this trend has continued with other targeted outreach to underrepresented communities. And though we have a long way to go to full representation, the learning here is it's clear that active outreach, laying pathways, not just opening doors, is critical to developing diverse pipelines of talent. That was something that we learned. Um, second one is readying early stage artists. So our most selective lab programs are really competitive to get into. Um, but we've discovered incredibly promising new submissions from artists who, who we would have other, who we would pass on. Um, really promising, they weren't going to make it, they weren't quite ready, um, but they were talent that we wanted to support. So we decided to create a new tier of programs at Sundance dedicated to nurturing early stage diverse voices. These programs have been incredibly successful in advancing talent into our most successful, pro uh, most selective programs over the past several years. And to me, this shows the promise of taking risks on great talent at a slightly lower price point. Um, maybe to prepare them for that $100 million tentpole. Um, so I will also, though, point out that a lot of white men get the $100 million tentpole right out of Sundance uh, without any preparation. <laughs> so um, they, they um, without, with only one small movie under their belt, and the very few women and people of color who have gotten that chance, um, like Patty Jenkins, Taika Waititi, Ryan Coogler, and Ava DuVernay, um, it took them three or four films to get that chance. Um, on financing, so eight years ago, 24% of the feature films at Sundance were directed by women. Um, this year, we were up to 37% and 51% of the shorts, which is a total of 80 women filmmakers at Sundance this year. So please, if you're hiring, go look at that talent. Um, this puts us markedly ahead of the mainstream industry, but it's still not representative of the population, obviously. Um, this has nothing to do with the quality of the work or the talent pipeline. In fact, our most selective labs are 50% women. But by the time we look at the submissions to the festival, we're only 30% women. So what's going on there? It's access to capital. Women have a harder time accessing financing to tell their stories, even in the independent space. Stories by women and people of color are deemed less universal, less commercial, and less relevant. This year at the festival, the majority of our competition titles were from women, people of color, and LGBT artists. And we were flat out told by the industry repeatedly that our selection was uncommercial. I'm, co I'm really concerned about this trend because as the industry consolidates with fewer buyers, fewer theatrical opportunities for independent film, and fewer sources of financing, we need to be sure that new talent will find a way of breaking through and being seen so we've been experimenting at Sundance with creating sustainable equity investor networks for female-driven projects. And of course, we're seeing a lot of other experiments like that across uh, the media space. Katie's here. We have one of, our, one, one of those people who's involved in that is here. Um, I do think that's a hugely promising trend, is thinking about capital, um, building careers. Um, we've launched year-long fellowships for women and people of color to help get their second projects off the ground after promising debuts, debuts addressing that stubborn gap that Stacy spoke about in opportunity that prevents especially women and men of color from advancing as fast as their white male peers. What we've learned is that customized support addressing the specific ambitions and goals of individual artists combined with the advice and community of fellow artists for a full year provides extraordinary momentum. This sort of work could be the mo is the model for the Reframe Sponsorship Program. So we do all of this because we believe in the power of stories, um, those small moments when a film touches you and creates that spark, that small change inside an individual 
Um, and, and I think it's that change, that personal shift inside an individual that leads to multiple shifts inside individuals that leads to culture shift. And I think it's culture that shifts laws and practices and creates change. So it doesn't really happen the other way around. And we see that time and again. So for me, when I think about how stories create change, it's, it's, it's going from that individual experience out and every story can make that difference. And that's why I think this work is so important.